Good afternoon, everyone. I am Rachel Marshall, and I am just going to get started. It is three o'clock, um, so we will just get started. I will wait just a couple of minutes um, to see if anybody shows up, but if not, you get to watch me do this, and that's great. Um, just think about that as, as if you're watching or if you are in um, your, if you're here, you're not here, but same about this, have you ever had students just draw how they're feeling? Um, so think about that for just a minute. All right, so we are going to continue um, professional development norms as usual. This is, this is what it is. Um, so if you have a question, right, um, well, no one's here, so we'll just, we'll just keep going. But think about this. So as with everything we do, um, we do follow the, our, this is our MTSS framework. And this, this class that, um, this PD that I'm doing right now, it's based off of two classes that I'm taking. And for those who know me, I am the middle school math specialist for our district. But um, so the class that I am taking is the related classes are understanding distress in the math classroom and fostering social and emotional learning in the math classroom. Very similar um, topics. And um, I had to do a final project. So this is this is my final project on it. However, it does go into our social and emotional learning and helping with behavior and understanding how students are, um, how they, how they are in the classroom. So our learning intentions and success criteria for today are that teachers will learn different strategies to help students manage their stress in the classroom and hopefully our success criteria will be that you'll use one of the classrooms, one of the strategies. So let's just talk about math. That seems to be the biggest, um, some people have a lot of distress when it comes to math. So take a piece of paper and think about you doing math and draw yourself doing math. No, I'm, I'm waiting a little bit. I realize this is a recording, but um, I am I am waiting. Now pictures tell a thousand words. And the reason that I'm having you draw yourself doing math is because this professor, her name is Rachel Bachman, up at the university up at Weber State University, they did a study on distress in math in the math classroom and um, they decided that some some of the data points they were going to collect were uh, drawings they asked students to draw so we're gonna watch four separate videos of her explaining these drawings so here is the first one the next section this presentation, of this presentation, we're going to be looking at some drawings, some drawings um, and, and all of them, all of them uh, uh, with the exception of one or at the university level. level. I've actually I've had, actually teachers, had teachers give this drawing prompt, prompt, prompt all the way from, the way from kindergarten, kindergarten and, and then up through seniors, seniors here in college. college. Uh, but, uh, but we're, we're going to focus specifically on college student, student pictures because that's where I've done a bulk of the research with this drawing prompt. And so we're going to actually look at four different sets. And as we look at these, and as these pictures come on the screen, I would I just, just like you to type, type one or two words, words that describes what you notice. notice. You don't uh, some of these pictures, pictures will look a lot like the ones that you all drew, and other groups of these pictures will look very different. different. So this, this the group, group that's about, about to start is the most similar to the kinds of pictures that you all are drawing. So I'm just going to let this come on the screen. I'll pause for a few seconds as you get a sense of what you're seeing there in the picture. This is the same person at different cycles of his problem solving.
Again, again, I grouped, I grouped these, these pictures somewhat purposefully, this first, first grouping, grouping the, most the most similar to things that you all were drawing. drawing. Perhaps, Perhaps you'll, you'll notice, notice some similarities. You can type, type those, those kinds of things. things. Okay. So, again, so again, these are being, being grouped, grouped together for some particular, particular reason. Perhaps, Perhaps try, to try to pull out a couple words, words that seem to capture what you're, what you're seeing. You can, you can submit, submit as many, as many words, words as you want to. to. Um, just, just only, only submit, submit one or two at a time. time but don't want, don't want to break it. My colleague, My colleague put his whole dissertation in, and I think it did actually break it. Okay. Let me just see. Very, Very different, different pictures, pictures but some, some of the, the same, same ideas, ideas repeating here, here over, over and over. Okay, okay so, there's so there's that collection of, of uh, one, one type. type of. So that's the collection. The one. next, the next section, section of this presentation, we're going to be looking, looking at some drawings, drawings um, and, and all, all of them, uh, with the exception of one, are at the university level. level. I've, I've actually, actually had teachers give this drawing, drawing prompt all the way, all the way from okay. kindergarten, kindergarten yeah. and then up through Sorry. seniors, seniors here. Somehow. There we go. <laughs> okay. Now we're going to look at the next one. And I apologize that the, uh, that one was slow. I was low. I was small. I was a little worried about getting it larger. So, so now we're going to start, start on another, another set. set. Again, Again, these have been grouped for a particular reason. reason. They, they may make look a little bit less like the pictures, pictures that you all submitted. submitted. So, so again, again, one or two, or two words, words to kind of capture, capture what, what's, really what's really getting, getting at the essence, essence of this, this group of pictures. pictures. Okay. okay. I'm just be thinking about what, what, how are these kind of different maybe than the last group of pictures? What are, what are some, some common, common themes, themes that you're, that you're seeing? seeing? What's, What's the big, big message, message that the students, students are trying, trying to convey? convey? So again, so again this, this is the prompt, prompt that says, trauma, trauma comes, comes to mind when you think of mathematics. You can, you can submit, submit those, one or two words. words. You can, you can submit, submit as many as you like. like. Whatever, Whatever comes to your mind. mind. What, what do these pictures, pictures elicit for you about what students believe math is? So okay. kind of, all, right, all right, that's, that's that, that second, second collection. collection. Just, just pause, pause for a few moments, moments while you maybe submit, submit a few more words, words that, that describe, describe these pictures. pictures. So yeah, so think about that. What, what are the students saying in those pictures? So, so now, now we're, we're going to start, start on another, another set. set. Again, Again, these have been grouped for a particular reason. reason. They, they may make look a little bit less like There we go, gosh. Excuse me, sorry, when it goes. Okay, okay so, here so here we go, we go again. again. Just what, what words, words are jumping, jumping out to you? you? So, so these are grouped together, together as, being as being different, different than, than either of the groups we've already seen. seen. That, that is, is a monitor, in case, in case you were wondering. At first, first I thought, I thought a rainbow, rainbow was coming, coming out of my mouth. mouth. It is it not. Is not. <laughs> This is as bad as my Utah, Utah swearing, swearing sometimes, sometimes gets, gets there. there. <laughs> yeah. Actually, Actually it's, it's, it's not, not as bad. bad. <laughs> That's a lot of bubble. Okay. okay. A little, little box and match, match happening there. there. Okay. Yeah. Okay, this, this is a collection, collection that represents another, another significant, significant group of students that we see uh, when, we when we ask them to draw themselves, themselves doing that. Doing that. Just, just pause, pause for maybe, for maybe five, five more seconds or so, so let, let you, you clock, clock in some ideas, ideas what these, what these pictures, pictures elicit. elicit. Do they have, they have in common? common? What's, What's their essential message, message that they're, they're trying, trying to convey? Okay, so here we go again. I want to do that. Okay. And... 
last one. All right, here we go. As she says, hold on to your hats. There's, 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 there's a, a lot, lot of irritation, irritation not picking up, up on all of it. He's, he's on, on fire, fire falling, falling off a big cliff, cliff with, with a gun to his head, head with, with jellyfish, jellyfish shark, shark, and an electric eel waiting, waiting his demise, demise below. below. This, this says pre calculus. calculus. This one is also a little bit fuzzy. The, uh, the girl, girl here, here is, is in front of the train, train that's, that's coming. coming. And then and they, they softened, softened it a bit. By, by, just, just, just kidding. kidding. Just, 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 just kidding. kidding. Okay. okay. So think about that. Um, there was a wide range. Now it did have to do with math, but it could be in any subject. How are they feeling when it comes to that subject? ELA, I know for me personally, ELA would have been one of those four, um, one of those, the last picture um, and the pre-calculus one where he was falling off a cliff. Um, the book would have said something like crime and punishment. Um, and, and so, your students are are experiencing a range of emotions in in your class and they they need some help in um in navigating that and there are some strategies that we can use that we're going to go through in the next 18 minutes on um that will help these specifically were taken for for again for math but think about how they can be adapted for your own content area all right here, oh, we, here go. we go so here are the strategies um one is called prepare to forget then removing the question and bilateral tapping the the Bilateral tapping may be something to do right before a break, winter break, or right as we come back. So just so you know, because that one is a little bit more involved than the other two. So preparing to forget. Basically what you're doing is you're helping the students prepare to come up with strategies that will help them in case they forget. It's not telling them a mnemonic device, it's helping them come up with strategies to to remember and to find patterns. Um, so again, a mathematics example would be PEMDAS. We all know what PEMDAS is, but do you know when to use it? A mnemonic device doesn't necessarily work unless you know how to use it. So you are prompting the students and asking, what from here, if, if you are on a test or if you're somewhere else, what can, and you see a problem like this or you see a question like this, what will you do to remember? So they are the ones that are coming up with those strategies. When the teacher is the one just spewing the strategies, they're not the ones, the students don't remember necessarily remember those strategies. But if the student is the one that is coming up with the strategies on their own, then that is more useful to them and they own it more and they remember it more. This is why we always, we really talk a lot about structured academic discussion because when students are talking, they are the ones doing the learning. That's the big important thing is when students are talking, they are the ones doing the learning. Now, you do want to make sure that the strategies they are coming up with are accurate and valid. And so it's not just just come up with a strategy. It's they, they then share their strategies because someone may learn from another student. So while you want to have, it may be less review 
And I, as a math teacher, can review all I want and show them the strategies. But if I'm not prompting them to own it, then that's where distress comes from because they are not owning it. So kind of think about how that could be used in your own classroom. All right, the next one is called removing the question. Again, this is a math example, but it can be, I, I can think of some history ones where they re, just read uh, the historical context and they come up with questions on their own. Science is a great example. What it is, is you are removing the question. Now, think about it. In math, how many times did you see a story problem and you went straight to the, to the question? The students do it all the time. They go straight to the question without reading and slowing down. So this is a way of getting students to slow down and really start to think through uh, the problems. So here's, here's an example. Diego paid $47 for three tickets to a concert. Andre paid $141 for nine tickets to a concert. That's great. What are some questions we could ask about this situation? How much does a ticket cost? What if someone wanted to buy 10 tickets? How much would they pay? Is it, is it equal? Like if you buy three tickets, is that, or are you getting a discount for getting nine tickets? Are you getting a discount for paying more tickets? There's a lot of different questions that can be asked with just this one simple problem. But what this gets students to do is they are not focused on the question, they're focused on the situation. The questions seem to be the thing that students get caught up the most in. And so when they're caught, when they are focusing on the situation, they are already problem solving in their minds and they're already coming up with the solutions. The question doesn't matter. Well, it does, but the question is just an afterthought. Once they have come up with questions, then you can show them the actual question. It's probably something they already came up with. But this is a really good strategy to decrease that stress and to get students to more focus on the math itself or the problem itself instead of just getting the right answer. That's where the distress comes is because a lot of times they have always been told, no, you're wrong. No, you're wrong. No, you're wrong. No, you're wrong. And that really does really, it, it wears on a student and it really does have uh, an effect on self-esteem as was noticed, noted in those pictures that the students were drawing. These are college students. A lot of pictures that she, sh she has shown were students who were in a math education or even a math program. And they were still really, really, really kind of dark. I know in some of the classes I took in college, that would have been the, the case. Is I would have just said, I don't know. And I, I would have been the brain with the knife through it or um, just straight up stress. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to find strategies to help students step back, take a deep breath and realize that they can do it and giving them the strategies to do it. The last one we're gonna do is called bilateral tapping. Now bilateral tapping is a way of, it gets you into yourself and also it gets you thinking about what, um, what you want. It's kind of a manifesting thing. So I'm gonna walk you through this. Um, so it's gonna take a little bit, it's gonna take a, a little bit longer, but it'll take us to the end of this, um, this PD. Thank you for watching. Um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a piece of paper and fold it into four quarters. So I am going to, I need to go here. And in the presentation, there is a script for this. So I want you to make sure you know. So once you have drawn, folded your a piece of paper into four quarters, um, I want you to think about yourself, a situation today um, that kind of frustrated you, a frustrating teaching situation. Draw that picture frustrating teaching situation, a situation that just didn't go that well. If it wasn't today, yesterday, 
just that situation and draw it. Okay, thank you for taking the time to draw what came to your mind when you thought about that frustrating situation. Now we are going to imagine <clears throat> what you would like that situation to actually be. What would you prefer the image to be or look like? How would you like to feel? Draw a picture that captures this image that you would prefer to come to mind when you think about that teaching situation. Draw this in the top right part of your paper. Okay, thank you for taking the time to draw a different image. Before we add to our papers again, we're going to pay attention to parts of our pictures that feel good in our bodies and help tap that belief into ourselves. Slow back and forth tapping or bilateral tapping has been shown to help the brain build positive emotions, beliefs, and body sensations. One way to do bilateral tapping is simply tap your hands on top of your knees alternating right hand and left hand. I'm kind of exaggerating it, but right, I'm just doing it under my desk. So looking again at your image, notice the positive aspects. So that image in the top right corner, notice the positive aspects. And if it feels good in your body, tap these positive images, emotions, and thoughts in. Thank you for tapping that in with me. Now, I'd like to invite you to notice if there are any changes to your previous picture after a set of tapping. Does how you want to feel in that frustrating situation look different now after tapping? I'd like you to draw those changes in the next square. Thank you for participating in this with me. Now we did that as a teacher. I was doing it as you were a teacher, but you can do it. The script that I have linked in the presentation is what you could do for students. So instead of like a frustrating situation as 
a teacher, you can start them with draw you doing math, draw you reading a book, draw you um, how you feel about PE, anything like that. And you can go through the same situation. It takes five to 10 minutes. It can seem kind of weird. It's really weird when you're doing it and nobody's there. Um, but because studies have shown that actually can, it's, it's a way of getting those positive images back in. It does decrease that stress and that distress level for students to get out of, if you've ever seen the limbic, the lower brain into, into the, um, instead of the fight or flight, it's more of the rational brain. So it, it really does help them to get into that. So at the end, I'm just going to wrap up that they did that study with all of the pictures and they did a lot of these types of um, strategies with the students. There were, there are a lot more. And then they had the students draw again and the changes were significant in how they felt in this case about math, but overall, it could be about anything. So think about that. Think about what strategies you could use in your classroom to help students, especially students this year who are experiencing a high level of distress, what you can do to help them get there, whether it's breathing, just these, these are quick strategies to be able to use. And I honestly would use this bilateral tapping right before the break. Get them just calming down. So think about what it looks like in other subjects. I've kind of talked about that, but thank you for watching. Um, and this will, and good luck. Thank you.